that the <clears throat> Embassy of Netherlands presents each year an award to an American who has demonstrated a lifetime of contributions to combating intolerance, anti-Semitism, racism, or discrimination while upholding freedom and equal rights is a fitting reflection of the abiding friendship and shared values of our two nations. That this award is in the name of Anne Frank captures a confluence of meetings, the hopes and dreams of the young, the lasting impact of the gifted writer, the boundless potential of women to contribute to the world given the right education and opportunities, an abiding warning to humanity of the price paid when good people stand idly by evil and suffering as the potential gifts of millions are shattered and dissipated. Receiving the inaugural Anne Frank Award was one of the great honors of my life. That I should have the opportunity today to present the tribute to this year's spectacular Anne Frank Award, uh, awardee, Ben Ferentz, truly Kosi Ravaya, my cup runneth over. For 72 years, this remarkable figure has strode across the human rights landscape of the world with clear and powerful messages. The rule of law, equitably, forcefully, consistently applied, is indispensable for civilization to prevail. Accountability to those who engage in crimes against humanity must always be imposed for the sake of justice and deterrence. As he has said, there can be no peace without justice, no justice without law, no meaningful law without a court to decide what is just and lawful under any given circumstances. It is difficult for me to convey adequately what a beloved iconic figure Mr. Ferentz is in the human rights community, celebrated for his keen intelligence, his searing determination, his prophetic willingness to speak truth to power, as well as his endearing mentalkeit and his boundless humor, which you will all enjoy in just a moment. He has come to all this through the lessons learned from his own life, a life story quite well known, the subject of films, television profiles, tribute articles, just a bare recitation is sufficient today. Born in Transylvania, transported to New York's Hell's Kitchen, Harvard Law School, and then when Pearl Harbor was struck, enlisted as a private in the Army. Landing on Normandy in D-Day, he fought in some of the major battles as the Allies moved into Germany. When he was drafted to research Nazi crimes with the Army's War Crimes Branch, one of the first into the camps, he helped gather vital evidence and first-person survivor testimonies that would later play such a vital role in the Nuremberg trials. And after the war, as you began to see here, he was drafted as a lawyer to assist first in research effort, efforts to buttress the prosecution of the Nuremberg trials. These efforts led him and his team to take possessions of a catch of official Nazi documents recording, recording, the astonishingly terrible war crimes of those who followed the Nazi invasion eastward who were tasked with killing every communist Roma Jew that they could find, the Einsatzgruppen. He recognized this as mass murder in an unprecedented scale. And at 27, he led the prosecution of the 22 members of the Einsatzgruppen who had spearheaded the murder of over a million Jews and others. It was the very first case he litigated, and he made history affirming the principles of the rule of law, as well as the moral power, legal justice, and functional deterrence of accountability. Nuremberg was the first international war crimes tribunals ever held in a template for all efforts of legal accountability ever since. These were the themes that would mark the life of our awardee. The legal landmarks, the passions, the prophetic witness of Benjamin Beryl Ferenc. His contributions did not end, but only began with Nuremberg. First, 
He played an absolutely vital role in the repatriation of refugees from the camps um, and of their getting justice over the years, reparations over the years. His pursuit of the concept and successful, successful fight for the establishment of the International Criminal Court, the ICC, which when established led to his being invited to give the closing argument in the first case, that of the Congolese warlord, Thomas Lubenga Diolo. What makes this court so distinctive, Ben Farron said in a statement before the court that will be read by international justice lawyers for generations to come, is its primary goal to deter crimes before they take place, by letting wrongdoers, wrongdoers know in advance that they will be called to account by an impartial international criminal court. And we are so honored to have you here um, today leading the court so well as you do. The law can no longer be silent, he said, but must instead be heard and enforced to protect the fundamental rights of people everywhere. That court appropriately, as noted, is of course based in the Netherlands, a nation long committed to the principles of international justice and international peace. And how fitting that near the International Criminal Court in The Hague by the Palace of Peace is a road that bears our honoree's name. This visionary has always seen with startling clarity the link between justice and peace that road represents between the court and the, and the peace palace. Indeed, his life's work reflects the recognition of the Talmud 2,000 years ago that the sword enters the world because of justice delayed and justice denied. Or consider his books, Planethood, New Legal Foundations for Global Survival, An International Criminal Court, A Step to World Peace, Enforcing International Law, A Way to Peace, Defining International Aggression, A Search for World Peace, A Common Sense Guide to World Peace. Notice a trend here? <laughs> These were extraordinary books. They set the intellectual framework for institutions that grew out of your vision and your mind and your ideas, and we are all in your debt for that. And of course, his groundbreaking work in trying to get one core of war crimes uh, uh, addressed by checking aggression in world affairs, culminating in no small measure because of his efforts in the new international treaty against aggression, as he has warned war makes murderers out of otherwise decent people, all wars, all decent people. His establishment of the Forens in, uh, International Justice Initiative at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum to institutionalize his legacy of demanding justice of victims of atrocity crimes. His personal financial support for the ICC's Trust Fund for Victims. The list goes on and on. And you, our dear honoree, as a last surviving Nuremberg prosecutor, you are deservedly an icon a living legend, an inspiration to all of a better and more hopeful future for humanity. I can only imagine how astonished and proud your father, your mother, your stepfather would have been at the extraordinary global contributions to justice and your vision of peace in the world. Peace, not pox, the absence of strife, but shalom, the peace of wholeness and healing that can be the inheritance of the world if we but make it so. They would have been proud, as I know you are, of all four of your children, including your son Don, who is here today and has increasingly devoted himself to the cause to which you have devoted your entire life. And in referring to your family, I should point out to all the gathered here that tomorrow is your 75th anniversary with your beloved wife, Gertrude. We all join in celebrating that with you, with both of you. That you are so robust and vibrant in your, at the age of 99, your 100th year, as you are fond of pointing out, is simply amazing. We know you've had bouts of ill health in the last few months um, here, that you've recovered so well our prayers go with you for continued health for many years to come. 99 may seem old, Ben, but let me just remind you, by the time he was your age, Moses was only halfway through his 40-year journey to the promised land. You've got decades in front of you. 
So Ambassador Shower, please come up and join me now, and let me invite all of you to uh, join me in acknowledging this towering icon of international accountability, this giant for justice so, so fittingly receives this year's Anne Frank Award, Mr. Ben Ferencz.